Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. What's up, folks? Yep, it's that time. It's time for another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show, where we talk about all things music, motivation, and success. We love this stuff. We revel in it. We bathe in it. This drives us. It informs us. It keeps us motivated. I'm really excited about today's guest. Usually, I have my partner, Jim McCarthy, Jim McCarthy voiceovers.com. No Jim for a very, very long time. He's doing something life-changing today. He says, I'm so sorry to miss Jake, but I get him all to myself. Today's guest... This is, I've been waiting on this one for a long, long time. Hailing originally from Long Island, now calling Nashville home for the last 11 years. Woo, time flies. He attended the University of Arts in Philly. And upon moving to Nashville in 2013, quickly acquired a life-changing gig with award-winning recording artist Luke Combs. Of course, I'm talking about our friend Jake Summers. What's up, buddy? I'm doing good. How you doing? <laughs> He's like, wow, that was very dramatic. Drum roll. So if you guys are just listening to this, uh, Jake is in his recording studio. Um, can I tell him you the, the neighborhood you live in? What is it? North, West Nashville? Yeah, West Nashville. Um, I, I've been here in this area for seven years now well you're smart you took you took your money and you and you bought a home and that's yeah. the american dream right and especially if you're a drummer you you got i tell yeah. the kids all the time man you got to be boom smack that that beat that you hear at guitar center the boom bing spask a good bing spank that's the one that buys you a home and i'm looking at your studio it's all audi muted out from our our friend mitch zlotnick what's up mitch how are you buddy and and you came over and did my studio you i like, know. picked up a a hammer and a nail and we worked and we made this studio look better and sound better it's a great product that that mitch i and, learned a lot from him and he does an, a fantastic job and he's gotten to do many drummers around the country and probably i don't know if he's on the world yet but at least in the country a lot of well knowing that guy he's like i mean he is a go-getter he's got like energy yeah and and we had it was good it was like it was, it was almost like a I, I broke out the entomans you know we had some like pound yeah, cake and, and some coffee. cookies and we had coffee and we kind of made a day of it man that was that was really fun i think that was like what three years ago already something like that wow yeah i think so yeah man he did mine. Then he was like, "Hey, I'm gonna come back and do riches. Can I stay with you?" I was like, "Of course." Yeah, I He's love like, it, man. That along, I was like, "Sure." Now you said that you were keeping your dogs outside for this interview. Well, how many dogs you got? You got more than one. Two. Now, what's the what's the the make and the model of the dog? Is? <laughs> so the <laughs> older model is three years old. They're both girls. She is a boxer, like a muted boxer with like a hint of lab. Okay. The other one we adopted, she's now one and a half. We got her at seven months. She is a Great Dane. Wow. Uh, she came from an unfortunate background, I'll say that, a very hoarding situation. So she is not a massive Great Dane, which is kind of nice. So this is like, like, we're talking like Marmaduke. We're talking like big poops, big food bills, big vet bills. Yeah, vet bills aren't as bad as you think. Yeah. Just because, thankfully, they don't have to go to the vet that often. Uh, food, yeah, yeah, from time to time. But um, big poops can be, yeah. But it, you get used to it. <laughs> it. It reminds me of Chevy Chase and uh, Randy Quaid in the Christmas movie where they're shopping, and he's got has that gigantic industrial sized bag of Alpo dog food he puts on the cart <laughs> crazy so let's get into it man it, this is so good to do this because um you know you moved to town and we quickly connected and did the coffee and collage thing and and you you did this in such a, a a professional manner you got connected so quickly how did this happen where you moved to nashville and within one year you got a life-changing opportunity Tell us what the secret sauce is. Yeah. I mean, as you know, I think networking is such a huge proponent in this industry. And I, I, I think you, I think it's very hard to be an introvert in our industry mm. because you really have to break out of that shell to meet people. And you can't be afraid to talk to anybody of, you know, any genre or any type of, background yeah background because yeah. you never know where it can lead and you know um 
through going to university, university of the arts and one of my former teachers there, he knew an alumni here that he put me in touch with her. The second day she was like, the second day I was here, she was like, I'm, you know, going to a party on music row. Do you want to come with me? I said, sure. I'd love to. I spoke to a bunch of people there. One happened to be a drummer. Do you know Cody Leppo? Yeah, of course. He was there. We were chatting. He said, Hey, I'm playing downtown tonight. Come sit in if you'd like. I said, yes, of course. You know, as you say, say yes whenever you can until you essentially don't have to. Yeah, man. So I went, sat in, played two songs. Um, a very inebriated bass player had happened to walk in. I walked off the stage. He thought it was my gig. I said, I just moved here yesterday. He said, we're auditioning drummers for our group tomorrow. Come audition. I did. About a half hour to an hour later, I got a text saying, hey, you got the gig. I proceeded to sit in for the rest of that week and the beginning of the next week i was playing downtown full time middle of my second week in town which i think is pretty unheard of and then even to backtrack when i first came to visit nashville there was a wonderful store in the gulch called two old hippies yeah who was helping me and he was a drummer we connected he said when you come to town let's get coffee we did about five months in the town, he shot me a text and said, hey, I'm leaving this group. It's going to be a great foot in the door for you for touring. I ended up doing the, I auditioned for that, got that gig. Did that for about six, seven months and was like, this is great, but it's not what I really want to do to the max of what I can, what my potential can be. Yeah. So I took a couple lessons with Jim Riley nice. and I told him how I was leaving this group and, you know, what should I do next? How do I go about meeting more people? And he said, go to writer's rounds. I went to Tinder Fund to Mumbrian. There was a round called Revival. I didn't know a single soul there. This was November 2014. And I walk in, and you've been there. It's small. It's kind of grungy, but in a cool way. What, the tin uh, roof down on the Mumbrian? Yeah. In the and it's very long. It's just a long very room. Long. Now, Jake, I don't know if I told you when we connected, but I used to be the drummer in the house band there in, in the year 2000, wearing my bowling shirts and playing for the sweaty masses there. And it was with this guy named, it was Henry and the Seahawks. And his whole thing is we play for four hours, no breaks. And I was like, well, you might not break, but I'm going to pee when I want to pee. You know what I yeah. mean? But anyways, yeah. So you go to the tin roof and you're shaking hands and doing the thing. Yeah, right? shaking hands. And I walk in, it's like, I think a lot of this industry at the same time is timing and luck and Obviously, yes, hard work and determination. So I walk in and I'm watching this writer's round. I don't even make my way to the front of the stage because of how crowded it is. So I watch from the back. It's one guy, this girl named Jordan Elena, and then Luke. I didn't know who any of them were. I just went to meet people. And I caught Luke's last song, which was She Got the Best of Me. He backed up his guitar, sat it down. I remember I just went up and talked to him afterwards. said, hey, man, I really liked your song and I loved your voice. He said, thanks, man. You know, what do you do? And I said, I play drums. I went to college for it here and uh, all that stuff. Studied my whole life. Did he care about that part? I don't really know. Obviously, he also likes to tell the story a little differently. But, you know, I definitely know that I would not go and say, hey, buddy, you need a drummer. Um, hey, buddy. But uh, he said, I need a drummer for a gig next week. Do you want to play? And I said, I'd love to. Um, so he sent me his material. I was the first one to the rehearsal 30 minutes early with all my stuff set up, ready to go. I'd like to also say it was slightly my audition. Um, did that, did the gig a couple days later, and then we hung out once a week, every week for the next month, month and a half to get to know each other, just playing video games and all that stuff. And well, that is smart. A lot of people yeah. don't think about that. Like and, like uh, the human side of things. Exactly. You know, it's like cool, you played one gig together, but what are they like off the gig? And um yeah, after that, I think he was just writing for like a month or so. And then he called me and said, hey, I'd love for you to be my guy full time. Do you want to do this? I said, yeah, I'd love to. And that was, I think, still 2014. And yeah. so I did the gig in 2014. And then we were hanging out a bunch. And then we really started to get going 2015. Um, gone over 150 dates a year, the usual weekend warrior stuff. And it was fantastic. And, um, you know, I definitely think I have 
proven myself by I have not missed a single gig since 2014. Incredible. Congratulations. And that's a decade Thank and you. you're going to get your watch. Um, yeah. <laughs> corporate, corporate, <laughs> Is that what you people a, do now? You're going to do it for a yeah, decade I mean, and get you I mean, a watch? Hey, they used to, buddy. You know, I don't know. Maybe you get a Casio. But, um, but the, <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is that you changed your life by having enough – uh confidence in yourself and enough gumption and enough follow through to take the leap to walk the five feet over to shake the guy's hand to introduce yourself and you also you quickly got in there like hey i'm not a guy off the street i studied this this is my passion this is my focus i'm putting i put in tens of thousands of hours i think i could be of a benefit to you what i'm impressed with him about is he must have had a great feeling but he was willing to hire you for a job without ever hearing you play Exactly. Well, I remember, so apparently the band leader, the old band leader was there and I guess he had gone up to him and said, Hey man, I found a drummer for the gig. And the guy goes, you're just going to hire some guy you met. You don't even know if he could play. He said, I have a good feeling, you know, with something probably along the lines of that. And that's also why I do a rehearsal. Cause if you can't cut it through the first two or three songs, okay, well then they got to go. But I did my homework. I was practicing from 9am to 9pm every day till then, mm -hmm. you know, I had all my stuff ready. I was there. So when they got there, it's like, man, he's good. He's ready to go. That, you, were, think, you, you were over-prepared, which over -prepared is- Over-prepared is the biggest thing. Yeah. And, and I think if you don't take that chance to walk over to whoever it may be, you don't know who you're talking to, where that can lead to, or who they know, then you might miss out on an opportunity. Yeah. It, it could be a session. It could be, you know- uh, a uh, songwriting type of deal. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, man. Well, congratulations. Uh, that Thank that you. that is a thing where you had that willingness to to put one foot forward and to shake his hand, firm handshake, looked him in the eyes. He had a great feeling about you. He gave you the opportunity, and your way of saying thank you was thirty minutes early, waiting on them to arrive. You were over prepared, and next thing you know, you got the gig. Here you are, ten years later, never missed a show. I still haven't missed a show either. One show, the day that my grandparents died, the same day I had to sub the show out. And um, it's a horrible, uh, horrible reason to sub out a show. But that's the thing is you're you play uh, jet lag, you play sick, you play, you know, it, the show must go on. And that is that yeah, is a really great thing. It's pretty wild. I remember I was talking to my parents. Um, probably last year, my grandma's up in age. She's 93. She's still healthy. But, you know, you kind of think about, okay, like, am I going to get the phone call one day about that? And I was talking to my dad and I was like, hey, like, I know she's up there in age and all that stuff. And, you know, I said, I, you know, would you guys want me to sub a show if that took place? He goes, he said, no, work comes first. Whenever that happens, we'll plan that around you. And I was like, ah, interesting. So, yeah. My parents well, we do, we, much, we miss uh, a lot, dude. We miss a lot, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You know, I've missed so many friends' weddings and stuff, but they have to understand that's part of our industry. I mean, my dad, with what he did for work, he missed a lot of weddings too, being a doctor. You know, he was on call a lot and all that stuff. So he understands like work comes first. I was, was going to ask you, what do your parents do? So you got a doctor? They're both retired now. My, my dad was a doctor. He um, was an OBGYN. And then my mom was a headhunter. So wow, I always make jokes about headhunters. Like uh, I don't think our industry works on headhunters or resumes or Monster dot com. Yeah, <laughs> there, there were headhunters out there, the people that would go after, like, hey, this 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 corporation needs this position filled, and they go out looking to scalp scalp skulls and find the right person, right? Yeah, and, and you know, I, I kind of find it interesting that with LinkedIn and stuff like you know I know we're both on there and so are plenty of other people like Mark Shulman and stuff and I'm like is LinkedIn really beneficial for me like dude I'm I have never gotten a job anything. from LinkedIn but you might it's as well like, just be on there right yeah it's like do I really need to be on there it's not like I feel like that's more for the corporate world than musicians mm. yeah Where, yeah do you know yeah. jam card yeah, I like Jam Card. I was like an early adapter. It was uh, mm -hmm. I like it a lot. It's um, it, it's it's more LA centric, which is you know makes yeah. sense because Elmo is it lives in Los Angeles. Um, but you might as well be on there. Yeah, I'm on there, and it's you know super cool. You well, know. See, I don't put that anything past you because what I like about you is if there's something to be 
had, if there's some experience that needs to be soaked up, if there's some place where you want to, th- you throw your hat in the ring. You know what I mean? You're just like, oh, Instagram. Yeah, I'll be on there. Oh, TikTok. I better get on there. Oh, LinkedIn. I should probably, you know what I mean? And it's like, and th- that's why I even saw how you have developed your career. You do look to people that are doing what you want to do and you ask them and you say, what did you do to do it? And then you either do that exact same thing or you do something very similar to, to like, like clinics. I was like, okay, when I was out with like opening up for the Rascal Flats in the early days, Jim would be gone every day doing a clinic. I was like, how can I get my hands on that kind of sit? How can I get in there? And you just do it. And then you do the thing. And now you got a twist where you bring in um, your bass player, Matt. And yeah, you do we, we've been together. doing it together now the last two and a half years. And, you know, when he, crazy story about he and I meeting before he even got the gig was via Jam Card. We got coffee. We were talking music and talking just life and everything just culminated in the right way. And then like a year later, so he had played with our band leader now. When he was like 15, Matt was probably like 21. And... We had no time to audition, guys. It was between Matt and another guy. Yeah. And our band leader called probably each of us, and he called me and said, hey, you know, we don't have time to audition between these two guys who would you choose. And I said, well, I'm not choosing this guy because you and you and him have a history together by playing, but he and I got coffee, and we really hit it off, and I just think he'd be a good fit. And that's how that kind of came to be. And... I was doing a clinic at Denver Denver Percussion in 2022. Yeah. And Matt was like, hey, where are you going? I was like, oh, I'm doing a clinic at this drum store. He goes, oh, sweet. Like, I've done some as well. Would you want to do them together? And immediately a light bulb went off in my head of like, nobody else is doing this. You never see rhythm section clinics. And drums and bass are the link to everything. They hold everything together. And I just thought, People can really benefit from this. That's Instead smart, man. Come or do their thing. It's like, yeah, you can go on YouTube and watch anybody of whatever caliber do their thing, but you can't ask questions through YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. You know, so I think doing these is such an important thing to benefit people of all ages and talk about the importance of networking, playing to a click. Um, you know, for me, I talk about open-handed playing because people are always like, oh, you play in a righty kit, but you're left-handed. I said, yes, but I'm actually ambidextrous because my ride, I play with my right hand. Where most lefties would play with their left hand. Yeah, like Simon like Phillips. You, with, yeah, like Simon Phillips or Carter, but he actually is, Carter has got two rides. But I'm like, well, if I took my ride and put it in my left, there's a huge hole here. Yeah. And the groove doesn't change or sound any different. With me playing my hi hat here and my ride here, I'm gonna do it because that's all I've ever done. So, do you really feel like you're truly like God given ambidextrous, or it's as a result of times in the trenches of you focusing on that and saying, I can ride with my right, I can ride with my left? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I hit a golf. Do you feel like there's? Do you feel like there's one limb that has a little bit when you break out the stick control book is like a little bit more smart? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I feel like in a weird way, even though I'm left-handed, I think sometimes my right hand's better than my left. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm always, for the most part, doing the two and four of my right hand compared to my left. I mean, they're definitely equal, but I think just having most of your backbeat being two and four with your right hand is going to be your more comfortable hand. Yeah, you know? and I'm I'm exactly opposite. Like I'm the one who wakes up in the morning going, God, I could tell I played about ten thousand backbeats last night because mm-hmm. it's the left hand that's like, ooh, it's all tingly. Ooh, better hey, ice it. I've seen you from side stage pull the open handed trick. Yeah, well, you know what first got me into it is like, well, first of all, you know, it's it the Gary Chafee book, the New Breed, is like a godsend. Mm-hmm. Like if you do that book correctly, it's like. A lot of us at North Texas it. back in the '90s, yeah, we had we we had two hi hats. Like Ed Sof was the one that was like, let's let's get two hi hats happening. Let's do the the Gary Chester book, and you do it. And then I think you know back in the day, um, you know Kenny with Mellencamp was playing a lot of the same beats over and over. But John wanted him to reinvent the wheel on every song, so he tried the open handed thing to make it sound like a little bit more self taught and sloppy. Mm-hmm. Which is which is a great. That's that's when I do it because I know that my left hand is not going to be as 
confident and detail oriented with these fingers as the right because the right's always going ding daka ding daka ding daka ding right so that's when i go to it but you play very clean this way i mean the idea of going to a different hand on that blows my mind like i would never do that in public i mean i think the cool thing too is you know like my setup is somewhat comparable to yours minus the right hi-hat but like yep. two crashes ride china china symbol. yeah um gotta have that even though our band leader hates it um but you know it's like to be able to yeah but luke loves it luke oh yeah that's like luke, that's, luke that's comes over and wears the right. hell yeah. out of that damn thing there's finally a small crack in it that my tech pointed out last week and i was like let's just use it till it breaks is it the holy china yes and it's, mine still has the chad smith logo on it dude it so pull that off the road and save it I'm going to. Well, I'm not going to send it to Stanky because I know he'd probably lose his mind. <laughs> yeah, no, no. D d just hold on to it. Um, that is the greatest China symbol ever invented. I think it's amazing. I have never heard a China symbol sexier that has that. To I told Chris. Chris Stanky is our A&R guy at uh, Sabian. For you kids that are looking for endorsements, um, call Chris. His email address is Chris. <laughs> Tell him I sent you. His phone number is, you know, it's the best sounding dang ch China symbol on the planet. I mean, I just, I love all their symbols. I use the complex line. Yeah. You're brave. I've only broken two or three of them mm -hmm. out of the, I think, what they came out in 2020 since then. Yeah. I got to use them on SNL for the first time, which was super cool. And then, yeah. Um, my hi hats are their uh, 15 inch big cup complex hats, which I love. Yeah. Um, they just sound so good. And, and <laughs> they're thin, but they hold up. They're very durable. Mm -hmm. And they cut in, but they also get it, get in and out of the music quickly. That's right. But, it's you know, going back to the open handed stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You can crash here, you can crash here. And, you know, I learned this from you. You got to play to the back of the room, the people who are in the, upper deck you got to make them feel like they're right in the pit so it's like the bigger the motion the more silly you look the better upper deck is a polite more polite way of saying cheap seats but yeah, uh, i thought um, about saying cheap seats but, but <laughs> there's actually no cheap seats in the world and nothing is cheap in the world forget it you know um if you're gonna go see a concert you know th that stuff is still pretty robust and then you got to pay for your parking and your babysitter and then oh, your yeah. your live and nation all, beer. All the beer you're gonna be drinking Woo! 18 bucks a pop Hey, it's just money. You can't take it with you, right? Um, what did somebody tell me? They said, uh, you never see a, 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 a moving truck behind a hearse. <laughs> 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 that's funny. Oh, that's funny. But uh, psh, um, I'm drinking out of my, I'd hit that po uh, coffee mug today. I thought I'd give Dave a little love here. Plus Fine. all the rich, the rich Redmond mugs are all dirty. They're all in the, in the dishwasher. So Dave, we love you, man. Keep the thing. We love the warts and all approach. It's a great podcast, right? I listen to, I listen to it. You know, I've never been on it. Well, Dave, check this, you know, Jake wants to, he did a whole Nashville series and I didn't make it either. I didn't make the cut. Oh, well, oh come okay. on, Dave. You can't know. It's all right. Um, I was on a very early episode, like 12 years ago. That's cool though, that he's been yeah. doing it for that long. You know, isn't it great? He's the OG. He really is. Okay, so this open-handed thing. Where did were your teachers doubling down on this? Who were some of your teachers? List those all guys off for us. Yeah. Um, so let's see. You definitely know some of them, or probably all of them. I know Don Paxson, Paxson, right? Paxson, Jerry Brown. Never met Jerry Brown. Uh, but you know who he plays for, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh Dom Femulero. Oh, God rest his soul. Yeah. Rest in peace. Um John Favicchia, whenever Dom was out of the country. I like Dom, yeah. And then uh, um, Mark DiCiani. DiCiani, D two and, C's, uh, DiCiani. Yeah, I, I moved here and I took a couple lessons with Riley. I uh, yeah. took one lesson with Ben Caesar just for the heck of it. And I yeah. took a few with Murphy. And, you know, I, I still like to kind of have the uh, tweaking lessons of like, hey, what do you think? I can improve on type of thing. Mm -hmm. And the last two were with Kevin and the first one was great. And then the second one was just like, Hey, can I get a tweaker just to like, see what you think? And he was like, dude, you're good. I was like, uh, okay. Yeah. 
because I always want to get better and grow my playing, but it's like, I feel like the fun, non-practical things that you want to work at at home, you can't really use for the gig. But I'm always trying to get better in some regard of like, I saw this guy on one of the social media pages and he was just doing like left kick, kick, left kick, kick, right kick, kick, right kick, kick. And I was like, oh, you know, like I could, if I worked it up to speed, use that in my solo for this year, which yeah. I haven't done. But just little things like that. Um, what is your solo this year? Does it come over a vamp? Is it in the middle of the song? Do the guys leave the stage? Uh, so we do a medley, and my solo comes after our keys player sings Drop to Jupiter. And it's kind of like, we actually, my solo kind of kicks the, the tempo of uh, Dirk Bentley's What Was I Thinking? Mm -hmm. So I solo, and then our other guitar player, I kind of, at the end of my solo, build up into Luke, then announcing him into that song. Nice. So I for that tempo. And uh, I get like a pretty decent solo, decent Good. amount of bars instead of like one V one type of deal that we've been doing the last couple of years. And yeah, not easy to do that. Like, it's like, Oh, you solo for a bar. You, you're trading with the bass player and it's every other bar and you can't really grow a solo by doing that. No. Like solo groove, solo groove. And it's like, yeah. What about just building the idea? So oh. but I'm glad I finally get to like do like a full solo. Heck yeah, man. Well, I'll have to see that. I'll have to come out and see you guys. Cause now we were yeah. on tour together 2018 and that was fun. What's the deal with like, you know, Luke's always telling you to take your shirt off and you're like, yeah, boss. Oh. <laughs> Are you still doing that? Yeah. It's kind of become a thing. I've done it. the la I did it both times last week. It's just for the encore. Um, I did it the last couple shows. Yeah. Um, sometimes he was just like, we did, we were in Buffalo a couple weekends ago and it was freezing cold. So he and showed some mercy. Two long sleeve shirts, a sweatshirt, and then uh, one of our buddy's brothers is the long snapper for the Bills. And he was like, hey, you got to wear his jersey. He's number 69. So I wore it. And then now I have it at home because I had him sign it and all that stuff. Super good dude. And um, But Luke was like, hey, will you take your shirt off for the encore? And I was like, yeah, for you, why not? And our keys player did it as well. But yeah, least, if you if you, you want to cut glass there. with my nipples, yeah. I mean, so they could do that already, unfortunately. But yeah. <laughs> but uh, our keys player did it as well, and he doesn't play that much, so he's up there doing like this, keeping warm. And I'm you know I'm still playing a little bit, so I'm fine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it just kind of has become a a thing. I love that. Yeah. Um. Well, which, things are great, and it seems like you guys have a really nice camaraderie with the band, like. Um, it's, it's great. It's really like a family. It's like a. It really is your. I, am I crazy in saying you see these guys more than you see anyone else in your life? I mean, really, like friends, blood family, especially you with the number of dates you guys are doing. I mean, you had a huge world tour last year where you're going to Australia and the UK and the Nordic lands and like you're all over the globe. You know, heck, how many shows you guys doing? How many shows you guys? Year, I think we did like sixty five. I, think I mean that's year, that's manageable, but it's when you go when it when you start crossing international waters, it gets more time consuming. Very much so. When you're gone for like three three and a half weeks at a time and all that yeah. stuff, you know. This year, I think we're only doing it's thirteen weekends of the actual tour, and we're already almost halfway through. Wow. And we're doing I think a couple festivals, and that's kind of it. Nice. So I think it's only like thirty or thirty five shows for the year, which is not bad at all. Yeah. It's a light, light year, like our first like real light year. So like we have off every holiday. So we've off next, not this weekend, but the weekend after for more Memorial Day. And then um, we got like a couple weekends and then uh, we have off after SoFi for about two and a half weeks. Mm, SoFi in LA, dude. Come yeah, on. Two nights. Not bad, buddy. I'm yeah, telling you, it, it, it's like. It's just so crazy that you got what how old were you when you got the job? Like twenty four? Yeah, twenty four. We were both twenty well, he is twenty four. I'm like a couple months he was a couple months older than me. He was I, you're such a young buck, buddy. Such a young buck. But we were both twenty four now. You know, he's thirty four and I'm gonna be thirty four in the day before your birthday. Ooh. Oh, no. We gotta do, <laughs> we, we gotta do a double Leo. Yeah, I'm down. 
that's so cool that you, that we have a, a birthday a day apart from each other. And then my buddy Eric Halbig is like a day or I think he's on the 27th. So you're 24th. I'm 25th. He's the 27th. My brother Jason is the 23rd. Well, no, I'm actually the day after you. Sorry. Oh, he, you're the 26th. Okay. Yeah. And then Eric Halbig is the 27th. So it's it's nuts. All this Leo's running around there. You know who else is a Leo? Daru Jones. You know, I still haven't met him. What's that? I still haven't met him. Oh, you got you got to meet him. Yeah, he's he's nice, man. He's well. You know, the thing is, is that he makes me feel lazy. He's always working with some DJ over and you know playing some place over on the east side, or he's doing he's a Sweetwater doing clinic. Huh? He's always doing something. He's always doing something. Actually, yeah, our yeah. bass player and I are doing a Sweetwater clinic November seventh. Yeah, yeah. So, which would be cool. That'd be great, man. We want to have you guys, and we're like, awesome. That's nice. It's nice when when your reputation starts to precede you. You put in the hard work and you 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 create this great product. People enjoy it. And then before you know it, instead of you having to make phone calls going, Hey, I'm gonna be in town. You wanna they call you and say, I see you're coming to town. Can we do something? Which is great. Yeah. I mean, we actually have off then and they're like, We are you when are you guys free? And we're like, Well, we're free this time. But for for all the other clinics that we do, when we get our schedule pretty much like a year out, we're immediately like we started calling for this year in November of last year. Mm -hmm. We call, we make all the calls and all that nice. stuff. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, it's putting the work in, but it's worth it. Totally, yeah. You're an educator, and you're also a recording drummer. You're sitting there at your place right there. The tracks come in, and you engineer yourself. Yeah, yeah. I use Pro Tools and I just essentially send raw drums. Like I, I have a tracking a song right after this. Nice. Um, I Am I coming over to play percussion afterwards? Am I doing shaker tambourine on yeah. your track or like? What, yeah, like more than welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I got plenty. You know, I got one of those. Uh, who makes a big fat snare drum? I think I don't know if they still make it. That Brooklyn Lager shaker. It's in that Brooklyn Lager can, but it's a shaker. Oh wow! Um, I'm with Toka Percussion, so I have a bunch of their shakers, and then nice, yeah. Um, but doing that after this, and then I, uh, I teach from home. I teach people overseas. I actually teach the drummer who is in the Luke Combs tribute experience. In I love it. You know, you've made it when that happens because there's a <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's an Al Dean. Uh, there's several Al Dean tribute Vegas, bands, but, right? Yeah. What do they call it? Aldine Unhinged, or I forget what it is. But uh, but yeah, I've never met the drummer from the band. Have you seen the guy who obviously does the part of Aldine in the, the Vegas tribute? He has the same exact tattoos as Jason, which blows my mind. Uh oh, that's a commitment. I'm like, how far is this? Like, this guy went full send. I mean, I would just paint him on, or I don't know. Jeez, or that's... like maybe henna tattoo them on, but like fully have them is. You're branded for life. <laughs> well, also, he could probably walk around Vegas and go like, hey, I'm Aldine, and he gets preferential seating at restaurants and such. You know what I mean? You never yeah. know. <laughs> That's a little, little schemey right there. That's crazy. So what about the gear? Uh, you you and I share a secret, not so secret. It's not a big deal. Who, how? I love Yamaha Recording Customs. We, we both love them, but you're playing Krabby yeah. right? Yes, I joined Craviato December of 2022. They've been fantastic. Um, I absolutely love their drums. I think that they are truly pieces of art, and they literally can be furniture if you just set them up in your house. Yeah, um, All solid shell drums, even if you do stacks. Like I have a snare drum here at the house that it's on the outside. It's a black paint, but two cherry inlays, and then the inside is a maple, cherry, and walnut stack, 30-degree bearing. And it sounds fantastic. Um, my kit, though, is a walnut kit, hybrid edges with cherry inlay. And then the hoops of my kick drum are walnut inlay. Um, and I, it just sounds amazing. Have you and, had trouble getting backline craviatos in the, in the major markets? Or? Um, you know, they know that they're not everywhere. So we just did a uh, charity event. It was Matthew McConaughey, Jack Ingram, and Mac. Uh, I think it's Mac Jones. In, in, in Austin. In Austin a couple weeks ago. And I told our production manager, since I didn't think 
Craviata would probably send me a kit for that one-off, which to them, it I understand. It doesn't make sense to ship a kit of that price range for a one-off. So I just told them whenever we have a one-off, because we still put our logo head on it and it has Craviato on there. Perfect. Just get me a DW kit because I'm yeah. with them. For, I'm with DW for pedals and hardware. Nice, perfect. And you get to hang out with Chad Cromwell, right? And Kibitz in Nashville. Sometimes, yeah. If yeah. he's in Nashville, um, I think he's in town now. From my buddy told me, but uh, I don't try to like hit him up too much. I know he's busy. He's still constantly doing sessions. He and is, man. Here, he's in LA. He's in New Orleans. He's all over the place, which is awesome. I'm so glad that he's still constantly going you know yeah and, no. you know i want to i'd love to one day if he and or the producer would let me just watch him do a session one day just be a fly on the wall because of how many things he's done oh just As ask well, him. just ask him man i'm sure I'm sure you stop oh, by, yeah, you know? sure he would. yeah but yeah it's, it's, it's the cool thing about being a part of craviato is their factories in town and my buddy who works there just sends me, he sent me a picture today. He's like, hey, what do you think about this? It's right off of Nolensville Road there. Mm -hmm. It's right yeah. near Forks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's cool to be able to like say I'm a part of this. Yeah, they're a smaller company, but they're very boutique. And oh, yeah. I remember one of my buddies was like, why'd you sign with them? Like, it's like, because they make amazing drums. That it, yeah, I was just wish there was more finishes. You could do whatever you want. You can get them painted. Oh, yeah, yeah. Free. You can get yeah. wraps. Anything you dream of, they can do. Well, it's good. It's, 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 you That's know, the cool thing. Yeah. You know, everyone thinks, oh, it's just wood. Wait. Okay. It is solid shell wood, but, um, but you can get like, if you want to do like a walnut, maple walnut as a hybrid, or you could do, say you wanted, uh, my buddy just sent me this maple kit, but the top layer was black and the bottom layer was black. So it was like black paint, maple black paint and it's beautiful with like yeah. two with maple inlay on the rim on the hoops of the kick drum and then on the kick drum itself were two more maple inlays and it just looks fantastic nuts well congratulations man it's like the bmw yeah. drums everybody's making great stuff i feel like you know the uh like uh you know dw is the audi of drums and everybody's just making great stuff yeah. you know what i mean and Nowadays, it's, you can't right. really go wrong you really can't go wrong. So we were talking about your open-handed thing and developing that. And we were talking about your education component, you being an ed educator. So eventually everybody will make their way over to Drumeo. And I'm super happy and proud of you. In January, you went up to Drumeo. They fly up there. They take care of you. They feed you. They put you up. It's a, They're great. And it's a world-class facility. You did some teaching. And then you're getting some viral views on this video of you hearing Gojira. For the first yeah, time yeah. <laughs> uh and you did a great job they, what, they 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 play it for you you get to chart it out and then you get to play play it right yeah it was cool i mean i think with them doing that segment is such a unique and cool way to show drummers that the humanity of drummers yeah yes the the humanity and kind of even somewhat humility of the fact of like i never heard that band before when i heard that song a there were no drums in it it was drumless and it's essentially make up your own part and i thought well if i was in the studio recording this and i only had two or three takes they they only gave me well i could have done a third but they were like hey you're good after two and i'm like okay um but you kind of think how would i play this how would i approach this and it's like i always in my head think simple is better and yeah. The chart I made was as fast as I can make it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to look at my chart. I'm just going to listen to the song and see what comes out. And um, I like to hear and there look at the comments of what people write. And for the most part, people like it. You know, yeah. and I think for the people who don't like it, they're probably sitting in their mom's basement saying, ha well, how did this guy do it? You exactly, know, Jake. Exactly, like, buddy. You know, you can't let that stuff get to you. But um, no, it was kind of like the, the, like the band is is the band Gojira or is it another band and and it's the band is called Gojira. Okay, and and I forget the name of the song, but I, I mean I, I think that means Godzilla. I love Godzilla. I've been catching up on all the movies, and I think it's Gojira, which is which is Godzilla. I believe I'm gonna probably get all sorts of hate mail. You're wrong. It means, <laughs> um, but no, it's like you know, it's, it's like it was like really. 
and like like really so you could you could get on the x hat and you could try to thomas lang all that stuff up but i like you you're just like dah, 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 and you let let everybody do the heavy lifting and lay down the boom schmack and it was great yeah and in the beginning you know when i heard that i thought slice and dice but I you, take a, you know that ride pattern i did that uh, da, na, na, na. I took that from that corn song. Mm. And I was like, oh, well, Ray does this here on this song. This could kind of work here and then go into the groove. Isn't uh, Ray, Ray great? My God. He reminds me of like, awesome. like Bissonette because he can, he goes to these like drumming melodies that he has, like those kind of things where there's like these little melodies that will like rear their ugly head all the time and they always work and it's part of his sound he's so good so good. he's open-handed as well he is think, yeah he's open-handed he has his right on his right right side his yeah his high hat i think he's got two hats and he's got his signature that china just straight right in the up middle up, yeah which i think is such a cool look totally but um yeah i mean i kind of heard when i heard that song i was like well I don't have a double kick pedal set up. I didn't even ask for one because mm -hmm. I don't play one really that well anyway. And if I faked it, God knows how it would sound. But um, that was a good time. I'm, I appreciate them having me. And, you know, I had Brandon out to our show in Vancouver before then. And he was like, hey, like, what are you doing? When do you have off? We want to have you up here. And I was like, sweet. Yeah. Um, it's got I'm a great like, job, right? Oh, yeah. And he's such a nice guy. He's so nice, so approachable, so good. He knows how to read, so he's always transcribing. He's always getting to copy those cool styles. Goes to Chad Smith's house, and then he's doing the interviews. He's a great host, and he can. I mean, he can play, play. his butt off. Play his so, butt off. I mean, yeah. To be able to do all these different things, I'm like, okay, how long did you practice like this event sevenfold thing for? Because it's not like you could just play that in a day. I mean, I guess yeah. you can't really sat there and practice it, but it's like. You have other stuff going on throughout your day, I'd assume. And to play that stuff is not easy. I remember trying uh -huh. to play that when that stuff first came out. I must have been in like high school when I was like, mm, yeah, my double pedal stuff, not that great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, have my double pedal on your kick. On I your always kick I stuff. always have it up there. It's like a you ever it, use it? Um at the ends of songs, you know, flourishes and stuff. You know what I mean? I, I think that inappropriate, unmusical double bass use is is a, the epitome of amateur, right? Yeah. So, but it's good to have up there because you know, I'm I'm from the um Ray Bissonette Carmine school of the falling rocks. Two in the hands, two in the feet, four in the hands, two in the feet. I can I could knock that stuff out. Matter of fact, they the band gave me a little drum solo this year because I guess um, Aldine was reminiscing, looking back at our wide open and more DVD that was shot in 2005. And I had a seven minute extended drum solo where everybody oh, left the fun. stage. It was very artistic. And he goes, we don't want it seven minutes. He goes, but how about 45 seconds of the most popular knucklehead go to arena rock drum tropes? So I said, OK, so I did it i composed a 45 second solo that starts out four bars of like a a foo fighters tip of the hat to the foo fighters and then it goes into a four on the floor and then it goes into kind of like a bissonetti thing and then he ends with a carmine type of thing and then with some some redman you know over the top showman stuff 45 seconds in and out that's awesome and, and that's how we're starting the show this year and hopefully we'll make it to the end of the year sometimes we'll we'll come up with things and we'll do it for about 10 shows and then like ah let's change it up for the rest of the year you know what i mean I remember when we were out with you guys, it was like the first weekend, I think it was your encore, you guys did a Bon Jovi tune, and then the next night you guys cut it, and I was like, that was so cool. Why well, you like know, we, we weren't, we weren't feeling beat? like the audience was getting it. Like, we were thinking, like, maybe we're old. I don't think they're reacting to dead or alive, you know what I mean? We're like, these people don't know, because there are the 30s, the 40s, and 50-somethings that know dead or alive for sure. There's the 30-somethings that may have done a deep dive or just like classic rock but a lot of kids in their 20s ain't gonna know dead or alive from which is crazy to me because that song is a song that i feel like everybody should know everybody should know bon jovi even if it's that one or you know one of his uh, one of his other big hits did you watch the docuseries on hulu i've not watched it yet but i need to get around to doing that check it out because well i'm a tico guy um i always liked his 
his muscular playing, his his sassiness. He, he just was a great fit for that band. But it was so funny. I, he really has an oral fixation because in every shot of him, he's smoking a cigar or a cigarette. Oh, goodness. Yeah. So our, our photographer, David Bergman, was Joby's photographer for 10 years before he got on with us. Wow. Well, so he's, he's been everywhere with them, and he's got some great stories. In Small World, Bon Jovi and Luke have the same birthday. Wow. Well, did you see – well, I don't know who's do, doing your videos, but the videos you load up to Instagram, it almost looks like it's like a robotic camera or something because it's got some – I do them. What's that? So I do, uh, the videos I post? Yeah. That's where the um, GoPro was generous enough to send me their Max camera, which is their 361. Well, yeah. You put in the 360 mode and then you edit the 360, like making it move and stuff after the fact. Wow. But, um, but they were generous. They liked what I was doing with when I had my Hero 9 out. And they said, hey, we want to, we love what you're doing. We want to send you a Max. What's your address? So they sent me one, which was kudos to them. Thank you. And yeah. I try to GoPro at least one of the two shows a weekend just to have content because I think it's cool for people to be able to see our point of view and I like to get different angles so like our our uh, one of our actual video guys who tells like the handheld people hey cut here cut here all that stuff they have these arms called magic arms so we put one up on my ride cymbal stand to have it out in front of my kick drum so my GoPro is facing me so I just edited a video yesterday that I'm going to post today and then i have uh another angle from saturday's show that is i just have like this like gooseneck clamp that's on the gopro and have it on my uh right crash stand facing me this way and you could pull like on when you edit the videos you could pull it out you could spin it if you want which i wouldn't do because i think people get sick but um but it's really cool what they came up with and so is that is that like a proprietary do you when you edit is it the gopro software or are you jumping into the final cut or something like that I use the GoPro software. I just do it from my phone. There's an, they have their app called the Quick App. Nice. And you just you go on there. Um, you have to sync it to like your GoPro's Wi-Fi, I guess, in a sense. Interesting. Or and uh, or Bluetooth. And then um, once it links to that, you go to View Media. All the media of whichever show or whatever you captured pops up. You click on that, and then you just scrub to whatever song you want to. Uh, cut to and then you can then cut however long you want so like i can do a video and put on my youtube page of I'm trying to think of a song i don't have on there yet uh what's your youtube page buddy i think it's just jake summers and you load up all this content how many videos I, you got hundreds no i think i only have like 10 or 11 videos. I haven't done it this year at all. I need to get back to doing that. You know what? I haven't done it too. And it's great when you get the DM from people that are like, what's going on? Haven't seen any footage in a while. You're going to, you're going to record this year. You're going to do a tour breakdown, uh, you know, video. They love those tour break, the kit breakdowns. I know. Well, they I, love I did them. one last year and mine hasn't changed. God forbid if you don't do it every year, I'm like, guys, it's the same setup. The only thing that's exactly. different is the finish of the drums. Yeah, I'm like yeah. mine. The only difference. So I've been playing these uh, Akutan custom metal snares on the road. Yeah, yeah, I met that cat. He's great. Uh, Cooper, great guy. So my side snare is his 14 by six and a half alloy Incanel snare with a big fat snare drum on it with the snares off, which I use for the song One Number Away. And then my backup snare is his T6 aluminum. And we've gotten to become really close friends. And we were talking August-ish of last year. And he was, I told, he was like, hey, are you using the same kit for next year? I said, yes, definitely not changing anytime soon. Um, and he said, how's the aluminum working? And I said, I love it. Everyone does. He said, I want to make you the same thing, but custom. So he made me like a piano black aluminum one with his 24-carat uh, badge, which all the snares that he's been generous enough to give me have so now my main snare is his the black t6 one and then my backup is the other t6 which just looks like a, a i guess a metal snare but the they t6 said, they're awesome and it's really really cool and then he sent me a 14 by 8 stainless steel which is at my house uh Ooh. that was made with ron Danette. 
Um, that's a big boy, but I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been playing their snares and, you know, I tried out, uh, I guess it was last year. Um, probably auto was generous enough to also make me a 14 by five and a half walnut snare matching my kit with hybrid edges. And then a 14 by six and a half maple 45 degree, like Johnny would have made. And I tried them out and they were fantastic. But I just think on the record, Jerry Rowe has been playing metal snares. So I kind of got to do that. And he likes, I think Jerry is known for, he's so tall. Um, oh, he plays dude. eight inch, eight inch drum. Like when I think about eight inch drums, I'm always thinking, well, it's probably going to be an eight inch drum. That's like, that's tuned like mud, but eight inch drums can have a lot of beef and attack as well. You know, he, he's an incredible player. He actually, a couple months ago, I guess they were tracking me, he sent me a photo and he said, <laughs> He said, sorry, not sorry. I guess you're going to have to expand your kit. And he did three up and one down. And I'm like, I love you, but damn it, I hate you at the same time right now. Well, you, <laughs> and and you don't have to. All you could, you could just take the macro rhythm and like break it up between yeah. what you got right now, which is fine. But yeah, I figured with him playing on a lot of the records, you guys would be fast friends. Like, you know, like. Dude, I, I mean, I, I remember there was one song where. There's not a lot of double bass on uh, Luke's stuff, but there's one song that we haven't played in a while. And it's a super cool double bass part that's very quick. And I texted him and said, hey, like, how did you play this part? You know, what is your what was your foot pattern? He goes, it was just adrenaline. Adrenaline. I'm like, it was just adrenaline. Come on. Like, you know that you had a specific foot pattern or something like yeah. that. But he's a metal guy. You know, he could play everything, but he loves metal music. And rock music, yeah, and so does Miles. And when and I, when I had to do oh, the yeah. T, I had to do the Tyler Farr gig subbing for Mark. He had some really adventurous fills. I was like, man, getting away with murder, Miles, murder. You, when you subbed for Mark, did you have charts or did you just try? Oh to heck yeah, them? you know me, I'm the chart guy. Yeah, I'd rather play with perfection and not worry about you know having oh, people so. going. What are the charts? But now iPads can make everything so inconspicuous, but I still haven't made the jump to being an iPad guy. Now, right after I talk to you, I'm going to talk to our friend Brian Zach, who's a great, you know, all-around yeah, player, awesome. and he's like swears by the iPad. So I'll probably like, you know, get him to help me with the four score and incorporating the metronome. Like when it comes to I, I'm just still old school. I like dead paper. I like dead trees. I want paper. I want a light on the paper. I want to be able to turn the page. And then when it comes to metronomes, I don't want it in the iPad. I want a rhythm watch or some sort of standalone device whose sole purpose is to create a click. It doesn't receive phone calls or texts. <laughs> it's not doing double duty with a chart. It's just a click. Do you guys use Ableton? No, we're a Pro Tools band. Johnny's got two Pro Tools rigs running in tandem back there. Oh, wow. Okay. So we use Ableton. Yeah, we, most most people do because it's so stable. We just use Click. We don't use any tracks. We never have. And we have nice. two computers that are simultaneous in case one goes down. Yeah, actually. And what is your Click sound? What, what is your Click sound of preference? It's Baker. So like on faster tempo, it's just quarter note. And then on everything else that's slower, it's just eighth note shakers. We, we tried years ago doing like the eighth note or quarter note shaker and then doing like a cowbell and a woodblock on two and four but it's just like too kind of bizarre i yeah. thought no a shaker is beautiful back in the early days uh and i know we talked about this when we were using an alesis sr 18 for click you can split the sounds you could pan things so i would send the the band a shaker just a shaker and then mine had enhanced stuff like tambourines on two and four and i had a low tuned conga like goom, 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 goom. so it was just more robust it was kind of fun to play with but now it's just shaker baby just a dummy shaker we and used to use the Oasis sr18 i saw in one in a photo one yeah. time like mm -hmm. off to your left i was like ah, so proud yeah. of until so proud. say 20 i say 19 no yeah. i mean mm. And well, that's where the shaker came from because my band loves the shaker. They they would never ever entertain the idea of using another sound source. It would be so weird because it gets in the way. A shaker, if you're having a great day, it just melts into the fabric of the music like a like, like you're playing you're, with if, the percussionist. like you're playing with uh yeah man like a Ron Powell or like one of these you know heavy percussionist cats man. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, what I else is them. what else is happening that you want to talk about or promote? You're teaching and 
privately. Oh, you are got your YouTube channel. You know, you've got your videos on your Instagram. You're constantly being nominated for Country Drummer of the Year. You're on these huge world tours. Dude, I'm so proud of you, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, I don't really know, you know. <laughs> I feel like we covered a lot. I mean, it's definitely been a wild, fantastic ride that you can only like, obviously dream of and pinch yourself. But it's like, I don't think any of us, especially myself and our band leader and Luke, because our band leader has been there. He, he joined fully like a couple months after I did. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the three of us ever really thought like we're going to be headlining stadiums one day or we're going to be doing SNL or yeah. the Grammys. And it's like, you were there. We've been doing it, which is amazing to be doing stadium stadiums two years in a row. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's always just a pinch yourself moment. Like the last small venue we played was in Paris last year. And I mean, aside from like the charity event, but like our own show, was Paris. It was like a 1200 person club and it was so much fun feeling all the air from all the instruments and being so close to everybody. Yeah. And now it's like, you know, Luke's on the thrust and some of other guys are, on, are, are walking down the catwalk and the thrust. And it's huge. And I'm just back here like rocking out and like looking at our keys players here and like our bass players sometimes right next to me and just having a great time. And it's, it's wild to think about, but you know, it's, it's, um, you know, really, unbelievable to see that momentum from 20 i would say 2015 realistically to now yeah and you know to be able to tour with all your friends is super cool too we've got like jordan davis out on saturdays mitchell tenpenny drew parker colby acuff and you know i know all the drummers in those groups like jimmy's out with us kyle's out with jimmy us. elcock and, yeah and kyle you know, uh and wilkerson Yep. Jimmy and I were just uh, smacking on your ProLogix pad on Saturday before the Woo, game. Thank you, guys. You guys are the um, ones that bought them. Yay. And, uh, and you know, I was like, hey. Like, Jason Edwards from ProLogix calling me right now. Oh. Like, <laughs> so it's a very small world, buddy. A very small world. That's and I'm, really, I'm really proud of Jimmy, too. We were on tour last year together, and he just sounds great. He looks oh, great. Yeah. He's an athlete back there. He's just doing the thing, man. It's great. So, I I think he told me that a lot of those symbols that he's using currently are yours, right? Yeah, I lent it to him last year. And then I lent him, remember one day he was in town and he was like, hey, dude, you want to go to Forks? And I was like, yeah, let's go. And, you know, he was looking at some ride symbols and he was like, what do you like? And I was like, well, I've been playing the 22 inch HHX complex ride. And I had, I think last year, switched to the 23. And then um, I have another 22 as a backup. And I was like, dude, just come to my house. I probably have more, I hate to say it, than Forks has at my house. And I let him, he's been borrowing that 22-inch ride since he was on tour with you guys. And this year, we're on tour together. And I was like, hey, man, like, are you still digging the ride? He goes, yeah, I love it. I said, hey, I want you to have it. Aw. I said, yeah, dude. I said, please, I want you to keep it. I have a backup. And all that that's stuff. so sweet. I forget what I lent him because because I, I, I have at this point, I mean, it's the way we play. It's probably all toast. You know what I mean? Because I, I think, did, I, I did give him a, a ride, and I don't think he liked it because he traded. He started using the one that you lent him, um, Jimmy. If you're listening to this, I still need to get that waxed denim jacket from your clothing designer friend <laughs> in L.A. Um, so hopefully, I'll get a discount there. But, um, but uh, you know, man, it's just incredible, and it happens so fast. Like I feel like the way the world works now with social media and new media, what usually takes a decade uh, takes five years now. I mean, like that uh, is a meteoric rise to success. Look at like through TikTok. Um, I'm buddies with the the guys from Billy Zimmerman's band. His first full band show was at one of the whiskey jams that we had on our tour in 2022 and now he's direct support from morgan wallen it's insane what's the drummer mike i met him in austin mike miller max miller max miller um i know a mike miller who's a drum tech with uh i know alice, yeah glenn. alice cooper right yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah sorry mike uh one night at the jam session in hollywood that i'd always go to poor mike i was about to get 
I know we would do it at the Lucky Strike on the corner of Ho Hollywood and Highland. It's it's a bowling alley, and they would have rock jams there. And I totally hit Mike in the eye with a drumstick that night. I mean, I could have totally blinded the guy. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. He's like, oh, it's all right. So sorry, Mike. Still to this day, very embarrassing. But but he's fine. He's totally fine. <laughs> you know, I will say one of the coolest things uh, since the beginning of this whole ride and stuff you know it's like you look up the people and all that stuff and I, i've told you this a thousand times but even before me moving to nashville i would get modern drummer and all that stuff i remember seeing you on the cover and then you know you just had this cool persona and look and you know you, how your kit was set up was super cool and you know for you it's really comfortable and which you know and it looks awesome and then it was like oh yeah we're going i remember like, it was like 20 I think it was like end of 2017. Yeah. They're like, oh yeah, next year we're going on tour with Aldina. I was like, oh, like this is really cool. I get to hang with Rich like as much as I obviously can because you're busy too. And that was a cool moment for me because I got to watch you every show from side stage. And there was a couple of times where I watched from out front. I'd go back and forth to hear how it sounded. Yeah. And I, I remember obviously watching side stage and you, you'd see me watching and then you'd do the open-handed thing. I was like, oh, this guy just doing everything and you know, it's, oh, it's beating the crap out of the drum. I mean, beating the crap out of the drums in obviously the proper way. And it just sounded amazing. And wow. I remember that one time I sat at your kit and I was like, man, years ago when I saw this on modern drum, it looked so like cool and it still does and like, comfortable. And I sat on it and go, I can't hit a snare drum at all. I know it's so low. <laughs> it's so low. Everyone's like, so why are you sitting on the floor, man? Um, but it's hard to keep it's hard to teach old dogs new trips but yeah we would we okay. had a great time and there was one night i think we were in raleigh we got rained out remember it was just yeah. raining frogs and we all sat out and just smoked cigars in the in the rain yep. it was amazing i remember i set my kid up for the show and then it was like hey show's canceled i had to tear it down and pack it back up and then i don't remember when they rescheduled that show but then i was like okay we're back here and setting it up again hopefully no rain yeah and played the show and all that stuff but it was cool like being on the hangout with all you guys and kind of well, I hang out with you guys too. You got, like I said, great camaraderie. I mean, it's um, really, really fun, man. Really, really, really fun. And hey, I was going to ask you, who's your drum tech now? Who's your drum tech? His name is Joe Miller. He uh -huh. was currently out with R.J. Hale from Hailstorm. Oh yeah, he's done. He's worked with them. He's worked with um, Blackstone Cherry. He's worked nice. with the Headhunters. Um, so the Kentucky guy, huh? Yeah, he's from Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. So, and he's a great guy, super, uh, super hands on, which is awesome. And he's always like, Hey, you good? Like everything good. And, uh, very, um, very on point with everything of like, Hey, how the drums feel, you know? And I remember the first time we met, he's like, Hey, my job for you is to make the drums sound and obviously look good, polishing the hardware and the logs. He goes, if they don't play well, that's on you. And I said, you're right. You're totally if they right. they don't play and, well, that's on you. Well, well, that, that makes sense. Well, it, 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 like, obviously he makes them look and sound good, but if, you know, playing wise, he's not the one playing him. I am, yeah. you know, but, um, but yeah, he's awesome. And, you know, even though it's our first year together, uh, we've gotten really close quickly and he's just a good guy and he fits in really well. And he's always asking like, Hey, everything good. You good. Anything right. you want change and very on top of everything that's good man is he is he your age no he's a he's a little older but um just really really nice guy and he he actually knew some of our other guys from kentucky prior to being on the gig which works out well and he's a good hang he's a really good fit that's a big part of and, it um i told him hey as long as this gig goes you're my you're you're, you're my guy i love that oh it's, it's music to people's ears. So listen, yeah. man, you have received so much great advice from all your teachers, from key figures in Nashville. Now that you're the cat, you're 10 years in, yeah. what advice would you give to someone? Is it the same advice or is it new? Something different? I would say, uh, I have a couple pieces of advice. So I'm actually learned from college from not even drum teachers. Uh, one being 30 minutes um, is technically on time. Gotcha. You'll know, be 30 minutes early. That would be on time. If you're on time, you're late. I think that's a great one. Nice. Uh, no matter if it's bus call, 
maybe not as much sound check, you know, type of deal. But like, if you're starting out and you're the drummer, obviously you have to bring all your gear. Make sure you have all your stuff set up as soon as you can and ready to go, so nobody has to wait on you. I think that's huge. Um, another great thing I learned in college was don't suck. <laughs> don't suck. Um, you know, obviously be over prepared. Um, if you were human, things happen. We make mistakes. Just continue on with the song. You you can't start over. You just keep pushing through and don't think about it on the next song, or else you'll just slowly put yourself in a bad headspace and go downhill from there. Nice. So don't do that. And just be nice to everybody. You know, it doesn't matter who you're around. Don't have an ego. Um, you know, that's the worst thing. You could be the best player, but if you have a, a terrible attitude, no one's going to wor want to work with you. Yeah. And always, you know, as you said, always say yes to everything until you don't have to. You know, people need to see you play on all facets. I was playing uh, Cajon almost every Tuesday night. Remember that bar south on the Mumbering before they closed? Yeah, yeah. I played there every Tuesday night, Cajon, for 10 to 12 different artists, two songs a piece. I wasn't getting paid. I was getting free food, and if I chose to drink free alcohol. Great exposure. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's great exposure. I remember one artist was like, hey, did you move here to play Cajon? I said, no, but thank you for asking me that. I thought it was very funny. But, you know, I play with all these people to network and to just play because I loved it. Yeah. And not everyone likes the cajon i think percussion wise we can well, say it's it. so hard in your back so hard yeah. in your back but i play it uh we do an acoustic band full band song on friday so i played that one time and it's not it's not as bad because i have that dw pedal that's connected to it um which is are you, oh are you using the box kit or are you using some other contraption uh i'm just using a cajon from toka Okay. Oh, sorry. That's right. I Go have to. their kickbox, which is super cool, mm -hmm. but I think they just wanted something quick that you could bring out. Yeah. And it works. Yeah, it's perfect for it. So. And what, but, uh, what is and what is your backstage warm up? Thirty minutes, the sixty minutes, singles, doubles. Thirty to forty five minutes. I start with full strokes, and then I will do eight on a hand down to one and back up. And I'll do the same thing, but I'll add a double at the end. So when you go to one, you're just doing doubles. And then I do paradiddles all throughout, paradiddles, doubles, triple paradiddles. My favorite rudiment is a paradiddle diddle. I love doing that. Oh, very useful. Um, and then flams, flam taps. Now I just do finger technique and see how quickly I can get it. It's because, as you know, it gets in your forearm and that's got to be loose as well. Mm -hmm. Stretch. I stretch my legs, stretch my arms. Um, I'm hydrated throughout the day watch what i eat as best as i can that yep. dessert table looks always pretty good so yeah that dessert table you gotta just keep on walking oh, me, yeah. you know me and kurt have figured it out like my guitar player friend kurt yeah i know kurt he's a cookie guy you know he just likes a nice basic i we don't need a seven layer chocolate cake and catering it's 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 wednesday night right i mean like who eats the dessert like that on a wednesday night we just have a cookie you know what I mean? Or a bite of a cookie and then whoosh, trash. Yeah, that, that's what I need to start doing instead of like they had churros and tres leches cake and I had two small churros and a tres leches cake. This was after lunch. And then for dinner, they brought in barbecue that was fantastic and they had this chocolate fountain. And I was like, oh, God. It sounds so like the I, Golden Corral. It was amazing. <laughs> and then I had two wafer cookies just dipped in the chocolate fountain. Well, you're young, man. So what are you doing? And then what are you doing for, for fitness? Are you just doing, are you like a weights and cardio type guy? Or? Um, so I try to, actually, I've been pretty consistent with it on the road. When we get to the venue, I'm off the bus, bring my stuff in the green room. And I just like to walk around the venue. I try to get 12,000 steps before the show, nice. which I usually do. And I started recently running the steps like just one section going up and down 10 times right or don't up, don't trip back no no definitely not but uh i work out every day i'm home too nice um because you have to be healthy playing the drums i don't want to keel over and have a heart attack or something like that yeah and you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, I, I like being fit anyway i think it's important especially now that i take my shirt off here and there <laughs> you look great. You look great in your black you. shirt. Um, people are always asking, Rich, crisp black shirts. How how do you get so many crisp black shirts? What's that brand? It looks pretty good. Uh, I'm a brand ambassador for this company in LA called Built by Basics. That's right. Built by Basics. So I'll 
you know, they've been very generous and, you know, they make joggers, which I'm currently wearing. They make boxer briefs. They make gym apparel. They make long sleeve shirts of this. They make waffle shirts. They make all types of stuff. And I just, I was just talking to my guy over there over the weekend because he's coming to our Friday night SoFi show. And I like to go on their app and just kind of see like what new things they might have. And I told him. You know, they they make really comfortable clothing and the the um the logo is very small it's right here on the bottom of the right side of the shirt so when they say oh for a tv thing oh you can't wear any logos well the logo is so small you can't even see it no they're just looking for a graphic on the chest they they don't want exactly. that yeah but yeah um, their shirts are very comfortable nice maybe they want to maybe they want like a like a silver fox type model for their for their i mean stuff. i can i can Thanks. see you know put you in touch i, I love mean, it i love it hey, hey, hey you wear v neck sometimes, right? Oh, yeah. I like, I like V's. Make those as well. I love the V's, man. That'll be my thing. I wear the V's. You wear the collards. Either, okay, that works. <laughs> that works. Because <laughs> I have to coordinate sometimes with some other friends. Like, hey, are you wearing those shoes that you and I both own the same pair of? <laughs> like, I had breakfast with my buddy Larry Aberman right before this, and he and I both have the same pair of boots, and we have to, like, check in with each other. Hey, you wearing the boots today or what? You know? <laughs> um, hey, listen, let's close this out by doing the fast five. It's never yeah. fast. But it's really more the favorite five. So favorite color. That's hard. I feel like I don't always have a favorite color if I had to really choose one. Okay. Um, You're open. I, thought, I would say black or recently black because I wear a lot of it. Sure. Or uh, maybe like a light blue, I guess. So cute. That's and how about blue. how about your favorite food? You like a, like a certain dish, a certain ethnic? Oh, man. Uh, I mean... I love pizza. If I can eat that every day and not gain a pound, I would. That or like, I love Chinese food, Indian food. Yes. Um, can never go wrong, obviously, with Italian as well. Yeah, let's hit let's hit that uh, Taj Indian buffet. It's on Nolansville Road. Yeah. A couple of guys were talking about that. Uh, yeah, it starts let me at, know when. I think it starts at 1130 or noon, and, and it's just really good Indian buffet. Um, favorite drink? You know, recently I've been doing a lot of tequila water. Um, Very skinny. I, you know, I did that whole 30 diet in January with my girlfriend. And I remember we went to go have sushi and you're like, I'm doing the whole 30. Yeah. And, you know, I lost 15 pounds from it. I feel yeah. great. You know, and I like tequila too. Casamigos is my go-to. Look at that. You, you and Clooney. I love it. I love it. So uh, that's probably this... my favorite drink. Well, so that's your probably favorite drink. And then uh, are you a coffee guy? You're a coffee guy, yeah. How much yeah, coffee? Have yeah. We consume gallons, rivers of coffee. I, you know, funny enough, I had made coffee this morning. I didn't have any because I'd gotten back from the gym and I had showered and I had gotten coffee with Steve Missimore. I am overdue. And Steve, oh, we got to get you on the show because Steve was one of those guys way back when we all had pagers and fanny packs. He was nice enough to let me and Jim Riley and Pat McDonald and Lee Kelly and everybody sit in because he had the house gig at Barbara's, mm -hmm. which is no longer there. And anyway, Steve, what's up? So we just got coffee. So I got yeah. my coffee fixed there. Nice. And I still have coffee in my coffee pot. That's probably cold by now. So I'll pour that out. But nice coffee. I try to do like a cup, a cup a day. One uh, cup? Yeah. That's all, kind of That's all smart. I need. That's great, bro. You know, I, drink, I drink it black. Mm -hmm. uh, I do used to not drink it black but since the whole 30 thing i've been drinking it black and although today i i have a sweet too so i got a mocha but um yeah. try to drink it black so yeah one cup i feel like if i have three i kind of get a headache oh so if i do like i'll sometimes do a second one later on the day on the road if i'm like kind of feeling a little tired and i didn't get a nap in yeah our mm -hmm. band is, they, we are cafeterians. Like, we are so easy to please. We just like, look, at when it comes to bus stock, we gots to have the strongest, darkest, French's boldest roast coffee. And, I mean, there's some days where you're like, oh, my God, you're in your fifth cup? Like, me and, like, well, I mean, seriously. Like, if I can do, if I do four cups, sometimes I'm like, I ain't getting a headache. I'm getting the squirts. But, oh, I'm sure. Especially using that Porter and Davies throne. That's why I only try to have one cup. <laughs> it's tactile okay these these are the last two and they're the, they're so hard and i understand if you have to have multiple answers favorite song is there a song that comes on in your car and you're like top down crank it up 
it just keeps coming into your life. Favorite song? It'd be because of the drummer, because of the melody. Oh man, um, I have a couple. Is that can I can I pick? Totally, a few? man. You're Jake Summers. You can have a couple. Uh, well, I guess I have to say it's top up because my car doesn't have a sunroof. <laughs> but um, I've always loved. Um, oh man, I might have Gojira. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I still actually need to dig more than them, but um, I've always loved uh, uh, "Can't Stand Losing You" by the Police. I love Stuart Copeland, the best. Um, I love that. Do they do they do they do do they do. And then um, it's either between these two, uh, "The Pretender" or um, I believe it's "Best of You" by the Foo Fighters. I think those drum tracks just nice it really hard and then um i think it's just something nostalgic with it but uh you know come together by the beatles all right and your left hand lead so you know you could do it like yeah. ringo but uh, you know i and i love ringo i think a lot of people kind of like like oh why ringo well he was the backbeat of one of the best bands ever yep um i mean there's this the thing there's so many different you know choices you choose van halen like alex yeah. van halen holy smokes you know hop for teacher the, sure i haven't even tried playing that nor will i but um no those are great choices man two foo fighters tracks and a classic police track before stewart started cranking up the snare drum he had that kind of fat back mm -hmm. you know and his hi-hat work and ride work are impeccable and it is and i stole all that stuff favorite movie bro Oh man. See, someone just asked me this recently, and I don't think I have one. So I get a lot of Stephen King, you know, Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, Star Wars, Jaws, Close Encounters, mine's Alien. Yours is Alien? Ridley Scott's Alien. I've probably okay. seen it a thousand times. I like more of the comedy stuff. Not it's that okay. I don't like the the uh, the horror stuff, but Oh man, if, I think if I had to choose comedy, so you're, so you're talking like Judd Apatow, this is 40, knocked up kind of a vibe, or are we talking yeah, more like, like Cohen like, Brothers, Farrelly Brothers? Uh, even like old Adam Sandler stuff, like uh, Waterboy, that's a great one. Yeah, okay. Um, Happy Gilmore. Come on. Um, oh, it's not even Judd Apatow, but... Uh, Step Brothers with Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. Oh, I saw you were on my drums. You were on yeah, my drums. Yeah. I, mean, okay. I think those movies are just like classics. I saw a shirt that said the motherfucking Catalina wine mix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a great movie. I and love those shirts. Those kind of like kind of like pop, you know, pop culture shirts because there's some really great phrases on those, but they always fit horrible in the arms and stuff. You know what I mean? So then you, you're tailoring it. Thirty dollar T shirt sucks. I'm like Urban Outfitters. Yeah, that's probably a good good place to buy them, dude. This was so fun, and I'm so I'm so thrilled and happy for your success. Your parents have to be so happy. They are thrilled. There was and, no plan B either, which was nice. Yeah, plan B so, maybe maybe do a little yeah. teaching, you know, maybe you know, but you're yeah. already doing that, you know. Exactly. I feel like it's you can do more teaching privately and really grasp someone's attention of what they want to learn compared to teaching to a room full of students who are doing multi different instruments. Yep. So. Yeah, man. Really, really enjoyable. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you if they want to ask you a question or, or a troll you? Um, my <laughs> website is Jake Summers and, and it's S O M M E R S. Yes, correct. And on there, there's a contact, portion on the website where they can email me nice um instagram is just jake summers seven those are probably the two best ways to get in contact with me yeah um i guess tiktok I'll, i don't really know i mean yeah but I, i'd probably say email and instagram email and instagram that is what the kids are doing these days man incredible i hope you guys have a 
fantastic rest of the year. I know we got to get together soon here and do the thing. But ladies and gentlemen, that is Jake Summers, 10 years with Luke. Luke Combs, man. Incredible, man. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Heck yeah. And to all the listeners out there, thank you so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. It takes 30 seconds of your time and helps people find the show. Until next time, hey, we'll be here. We'll see you soon. Jake, thanks, man. Thank you. This has been The Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts. 